We're going to talk about PPE and some personal tool considerations for the ice rescue application. So we want to start with our dry suits uh, and our thermal protection. If you're wearing an ice commander or an ocean commander or a cold weather type of dry suit, typically speaking they have integrated insulation. You want to make sure that the suit that you're selecting is commensurate with the temperature of water that you're going to be in. Um, in this application I'm wearing an ice commander suit. When you don these suits, you want to make sure that you are um, slow and steady about applying your feet and your hands into the extremities of the suit. Make sure that you don't uh, pull loose any of the snaps to connect the inside liner uh, to the outside shell. When you don the suit completely, ensure that you pull the head envelopment up over your head and zip the suit up completely. Any gaps in the barrier that you create with your suit are going to allow water to enter the suit. And remember that a little bit of cold water will radically decrease your operating time in this environment. Additionally, you want to make sure that you're always cognizant of protecting your face um, when you're in these type of environments. There is a reflex physiologically when you get um, extreme temperature water in your face area or your neck region that's going to cause you to take a deep gasping inhalation. Uh, and that can be very compromising to your ice rescue if you're in that situation. So make sure that you don your gear appropriately and that you select the right kind of suit. Once you've donned your suit, you want to make sure that your zipper is waxed and that you're using the appropriate pull handles on the zippers and pulling resistance on those zippers when you're applying them. Don't just give them sudden jerks because you can easily rip your suits, especially the cold water submersion suits when you're out in the cold environment. They haven't been unpacked or unrolled in a while and they're brittle. You can easily rip them. So make sure that you're applying appropriate mechanics when applying the zippers. Before you start getting outfitted <clears throat> with your body harness or your PFD, you want to burp your suit. So you're going to break the seal up at the top of the suit. You're going to bend down, crouch into a tucked position, and let that trapped air escape from the suit. If you don't do that, when you first enter the water, all of that air becomes compressed, travels up towards the upper portion of your suit, and creates kind of a bobble effect, makes it very difficult for you to balance your body position in the water. Okay, we've covered the cold water submersion suits. We also have the option for PPE of wearing a standard dry fit, uh, or I'm sorry, a standard dry suit. We're not gonna have the same thermal properties and insulation properties with a suit like this. So John, when we don suits like this, what kind of considerations do you take underneath the shell to make sure that you're gonna be safe out here in the cold water? Well, Dalen, it's really important that when you use a dry suit, there, there are characteristics between the two suits. I mean, the exposure suit has a lot of flotation built into it, has a lot of safety components built into it. It's quick and easy to don in an emergency situation. Uh, the dry suit uh, for the cold water and ice environment, you have to have thermal protection. You have, it has, there's no built-in thermal protection with the dry suit and there's no built-in flotation into the dry suit. So all that has to be taken into consideration when uh, using a dry suit application. The, uh, the dry suit itself, what gives uh, good properties in the environment is mobility. Uh, with uh, the exposure suit, which we talked about earlier, you know, you get a lot of air, it gets bulky, it's kind of hard to move around. It's great safety for the rescuer, and it's ideal for the ice rescue environment. In the, in the cold water environment or moving water environment, you know, we may want to, to opt out to go with a dry suit combination. In the ice rescue, which is talk, what we're talking about today, is the, the, the layering and underneath that has to be put in with a dry suit. Underneath it, you start out with some kind of polypropylene um, um, material that allows heat and moisture to evaporate from the skin. Then you have a, a middle layer of some kind of um, wool or another polypro uh, material of that type. The inside it helps to trap the air inside there. Then you don the dry suit itself. Once the dry suit is on um, and it's sealed up the same way with the, the zipper and make sure that uh, it has you know wax and it, it has to be taken care of properly. Uh, after you have the dry suit on, then you want an outside layer to help block from the wind and rain and stuff like that, and that'll keep you dry. The more layers you have on, the safer you'll be. But at the end of this component, you gotta make sure you have your, your uh, PFD on in place. So we gotta add buoyancy to these dry suits every time, all the every time? Every time, all the time. 
I think the other thing that goes real fast um, is the extremity protections when you're using a standard dry suit as a pole, as opposed to an immersion suit um, or cold water type suit. And that is with your hands, your head, your neck, your ears, and your feet. So like John said, uh, even on the sock ensemble, if you're, if you're donning a dry suit like this, make sure that you've got like a poly pro liner sock and then probably a wool outer sock because the booties and the neoprene based boots you're gonna wear are not gonna give you the same thermal protection as what this immersion suit is. Same thing with the hands. Make sure that you've got a thick grade neoprene glove so that you've got as much insulation property as you can. If you'll look at the difference, although I don't have the same dexterity with these gloves, these are actually lined with an insulated component, um, almost like a wool-based fiber inside of these gloves. So a lot more thermal properties with these. So understand, if you go down this path, your time of exposure is not going to be the equivalent with this type of ensemble as it is with this type of ensemble. So make a good choice when we're out there. And I think it all depends on the uh, the, the environment, the, the situation that you're in. You know, speed a lot of times is, is important. That, that victim is out on the ice, you know, they only got a few more minutes. Which application can you put on quickly based on the assessment and needs of the patient? You know, I think that's, that's critical on which ensemble you're going to choose. I think use. that's a, a tremendous point, John, and we're always going to encourage everybody to risk a lot to save a lot. So remember when you pull up on scene, we've gone over kind of build-ups with gear sequence, with your PFD add-ons, your tin light add-ons, your X strapping, having a partner help tend you and dress you. All of those decisions have to um, mimic the presentation of the victim and the environment and how quickly we've got access to them and, and get to them. So make sure you're doing it safe. Uh, for yourself as a rescuer, but make sure you're doing it time appropriate to hopefully affect the rescue. When you don't have um, options with your PPE ensembles in your organization, if you just elect to use one type of suit throughout the course of the year, um, be cognizant of all the points that John made about your interior components. Make sure that you're not over layering in the hot summer months and make sure that you're not under layering in the winter months. So just make good decisions. Do a lot of training and testing in different water-based temperatures and environments so that you get a good feel for how your gear is going to perform and what the correct decision is to make. Ultimately, just follow your department's SOGs. You know, once you decide on what product you're going to use, if you're going to use a complement of dry suit or cold water exposure suit, or if you use an exposure suit all the time, just follow your department SOGs.